So let's start here. A guy who we both hated on this podcast and said he was worthless was now sent down to the minor leagues. And as we kick off our headlines, he's the number one headline. Now, he wasn't that bad. He shouldn't have been sent down to the minors, which is why we put on our conspiracy theory hat. Um, He was supporting the company that is basically anti the Oakland A's. And everyone who has supported that company on the A's has either been traded or cut or sent down. And he was sent down. Uh, we do have a mailbag question about this later, so I'll save it for our mailbag part of the episode. But Estuia Ruiz sent down to the minor leagues. What is your take? Do you believe in the conspiracy theories? I do. Um, what do you got? Yeah, yeah. The company that you were mentioning, so they wear, you know, you maybe have seen the pictures. They have wristbands from baseball's last dive bar, which is described, according to the owner, he describes it as a company of fans that celebrate the history of the Oakland Coliseum and the fan experience of the Coliseum. So you can understand how that thought process might butt heads with the current ownership. Um, Yeah. I don't know if I believe in the conspiracy necessarily, but it is kind of fun to think about. And, you know, we, we talked about this around draft time, right? Why draft a guy? I mean, we thought he was going to just play, you know, every day because the team was so bad, but it just takes one thing to go wrong. And in this case, it happened to be playing time. One of the things that we thought was safe, but Ruiz was being drafted around like pick 150. Like that's a high draft pick to spend on a guy who is a one trick pony. And, um, you know, obviously now we won't see that trick for the foreseeable future. Nobody knows when he's coming back up. Um, it was kind of odd too, because he started off, he had a good first series. So, um, just kind of a weird situation all around uh, with the Oakland A's right now. And this this added to it. And it's odd because it's not like they have anyone better to play instead of him. They're the freaking Oakland A's. They don't have anyone there. So um, that's a, just a weird one for me. Um, another headline, and I want to get your opinion on this. I don't know if you saw this, was Luis Severino. He They, they changed a hit. In his first start, did you see this? No. From his no. first start, they changed one of his hits that he gave up in the first inning to an error, and it actually removed three earned runs from his ERA. And if you own Luis Severino, you may have seen that all of a sudden, without a start, your ERA dropped like that in your league, and that's because Luis Severino got three runs taken off of his uh, start, off of his stat sheet uh, from his first start of the season. Good for him. I, I did I'm, notice. Like, three days later. I don't think I've ever seen that. I, I haven't, um, it hasn't been updated on fan track, so it might take a little while. But the one thing I did notice is it says he gave up um, 12 hits. I thought it was 11, um, but I know there was only one extra base hit, right? Or the, the it was a home run and a double, so maybe that's the 12 one. There was 10 singles. So it was just kind of like an interesting game, like from a stats perspective, like the Babbitt was extremely high. I wouldn't expect starts like this from Severino moving forward. I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, a stud, but... 10 singles just feels like kind of you don't fluky. do that unless you're yeah, yeah fluky unless you're Kyle Freeland or something like that you know yep. um I don't know who would say to start him or stream him that was stupid of whoever would say that but exactly or you know. or Clay Holmes who just gives up every hit is just a dribbler ground ball but they all go through the hole so yeah yeah I just wanted to point that out too but no I did not see that that is uh that is good news because I have Severino on a team so I'll be watching for my year at a job yeah, well, Fantrax is obviously not the best platform for fantasy. <laughs> right, and right. I learned that, but I was going to save it for later in the episode, so we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, the other thing, and I think this is the biggest headline um, for me, the start from Garrett Co- Crotchet. I think crochet. You- crochet. crochet. Yes, Cro- Crotchet. Uh, <laughs> um, I was just going to, I call him the crotch guy, but... You know, I, sure. I think I texted you that today. The crotch guy yeah. on, on, on Chicago is what I said. Yeah. That dude is ridiculously good. Did anyone see this coming? Is he the biggest sleeper right now in fantasy? Some leagues, you could have picked him up off waivers last week. Now he's two starts in, and he looks like he might be one of the best pitchers in fantasy baseball. Can you keep this up? Yeah, he, he could certainly be one of the guys that, you know, was off everyone's radar. You know, these these kinds of guys pop up all the time. He was kind of off radar every year, and this is why we, we talked about like not drafting super high with fans with starting pitchers because you know Garrett Cole gets hurt and then the crotch guy shows up out of nowhere. Like, come on. Yeah, the the only problem that I have with Garrett Crochet, um, and this is one I talk about all the time, is just durability. He has never 
thrown more than 55 innings in his professional career. And he threw 54 in 2021 and then less than 20 in the last two years. Like, I just don't know where these innings are going to come from. Like, is he even going to get close to a hundred? Like I would be shocked, you know, and what do the white Sox have to play for really nothing. So maybe they'll just try him out until he dies or, Maybe they'll try to save him. I have no idea what their plans are. So um, I, that'll just be an interesting thing to watch. But that being said, he did phenomenal against the Braves. Like that's something to at least consider. Um, I have a buddy who uh, texted me um, earlier today as well. And he's, I told him to kind of avoid crochet in the long term. And he's like, look at this. Why would you say it? And then, so I had to take an L there too. Um, been taking a lot of those with my which some of my pitching streams lately, but um, it happens and we'll see. You know, I just I don't know if I anticipate crochet, you know, doing this forever. So enjoy it while it lasts, I think, and and ride ride the hot hand. I took a massive dub with Luis Heel going into the desert and dominating against the Diamondbacks. And by the way, for Heel, like I don't I don't know how much of that game you watch. I'm a Yankee fan, I watch the game. Dude is pumping easy 100. Like, you could tell when a guy is not even putting effort. Like, it looked like DeGrom almost, like, when he rose 100 and it's just kind of smooth and easy out of his hand. And this is another guy who already had, you know, Tommy John surgery. So mm -hmm. maybe there's something in common with those guys who are throwing that, quote, easy 100. Their body can't keep up with it. But he doesn't even look like he's trying. He doesn't look like he's putting a ton of effort in. And it's just smooth, 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, unbelievable to see from him the other thing uh, I want to point out this is more just to rip on you but you see the Cubs uniforms and uh, their pyrotechnics so the uniforms they finally wore their home uniform for some time for the first time some of them have this C on the right sleeve yeah. some of them have it on the left sleeve I don't think that's on purpose um, that's a fanatic special right there and it's really just dumb like like fixing the size of the letters like I, look I this is going to be a hot take Major League Baseball uniforms are outdated, period. Like, baseball uniforms are outdated. Like, they're wearing a button-down shirt in 90-degree heat in, in August. Like, it's ridiculous and long pants. It, it is stupid, you know? But they were invented. We're, we're using jerseys that are supposed to look like the same uniforms that were invented in 1905, you know, when everyone who was at the game in the stands was wearing a suit and a tie and a hat. You know what I mean? So, like, it doesn't make sense. What would you have them wear? What would you have? I, that's the thing. I don't know what you would have them wear at this point. Like, like a spandex I'm, suit. Yeah, or... yeah I'm kind of just waiting for the Savannah Bananas to come up with something cool for them to wear. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. So anyone who's like super mad about the uniforms, it's like, well, baseball uniforms are kind of like outdated as it is. But the letters seems like just such an easy fix. Like just make the letters a normal size, and they, they would look so much better. You know, like the letters and the numbers, if they were just a little bit bigger and 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 place properly that feels like that doesn't cost you anything to do that and that would be easy but but what's worse than that is putting the names on the wrong side and then it was just funny watching them jog out in these terrible uniforms and they have these two little like, like uh like flare things i don't even know what they are like firework flare things and when we get, were on our call yesterday i kind of compared it to like kind of like an old dude jizzing like that's that's the best way i can put it sorry um it's like kind of like like a little bit at a time like you know like, like you're expecting um, it to explode yeah. and yeah you yeah just get a little... it does not and now i don't know what that looks like i've been told though <laughs> so. yeah. yeah no i agree with you um, yeah um, they yeah, even mentioned ahead. they they brought up just back to the uniforms real quick too they were talking about it in the broadcast like during the cubs game yesterday when they won 12 to 2 they just they look like like um what's what's like uh what was the word he used i can't remember what the word boog boog used but kind of like the the jerseys Is you buy boob? at a store like cheap yeah they they 100 look cheap they don't look like professional uniforms they just no, look they look like the ones that done. you buy on like aliexpress or like one of these mm -hmm. knockoff sites which is by the way i said the biggest winner in all these things are the people who buy the knockoff jerseys because yeah, i was like right. i'll buy the knockoff jersey and it'll look better than it'll the real better. thing like yeah i'm yeah. always one of those people who's like ah, the knockoff jersey always looks a little off now they look off so the knockoff jersey. so if your point was to get more money like in jersey sales fanatics you're actually gonna lose money because now everyone's like fuck this i could just go buy the knockoff jersey and it'll look better why yeah. not yeah and then yeah the pyrotechnics was just i have no words for that you you hit it on the head it was just it was embarrassing feel kind of bad for shota right he came out and that's what he came out with but it must have worked maybe there was some magic there i don't know because he shoved he had an absolutely great oh, yeah. great game so um happy to see that
Did you hear about um, the new Oriole ownership after their first game? I just saw this. Mm-hmm. He walked, the new owner walked into a bar and he's like, Hey, I'm the new owner. I probably into pickles. Yep. I assume it was pickles. Um, hey, I'm the new owner. This is my buddy. Round of beers on us. We're so yeah. like, that's how you ingratiate yourself to a fan base. Like Steve Cohen with his stupid like antics. Uh, we're going to put a giant screen in center field and give you freaking dancers. Like, no, go buy everyone a beer after the game at a bar. Now, there are no bars next to City Field. So Steve Cohen is building bars. Maybe then he could buy people beers. And my friend actually had a great idea. Shout out, Max. He, he had an idea today we were talking and he was saying how like baseball stadiums right now are empty and it's so stupid. You're playing these day games on the weekdays and the stadiums are empty and it just looks bad for the league. Like you should just announce like 20 minutes before game time. Like, hey, anyone who comes to the ballpark right now, if you come right now, if you like, we'll give you a free ticket to any section, any seat in section 500 in like the top section, just fill the seats a little bit and you'll get the money back anyway that you weren't selling those tickets. And you'll get the money in, in concessions, if nothing else, you know what I mean? Like you'll gain that money in concessions and it'll also make a vibe at the ballpark where now people, if they, if this starts happening, like once every two weeks, a, the team starts doing this. And again, these are seats you're not selling anyway. All of a sudden people are going to start congregating in the, like and tailgating outside the ballpark, like expecting this to happen. And then if it doesn't happen, they'll be like, oh, okay, I guess we're here anyway. We might as well just buy last minute tickets and go in. I feel like it would create such just a better vibe for baseball. I would, and the best way to get people into the game is to get them to the game. If I had bought a ticket though, and I saw these people getting in for free, I'd be a little disappointed or upset. So, so that's what I, I said. So anyone right. in the 500 section. So this is what I said. If you bought lower down, you bought lower down. Sorry. But anyone who bought a ticket in the 500 section gets a $5 concessions value, uh, gets concessions okay Okay. gets like Um, some sort of yeah yeah, five dollars to to concessions per ticket and that way it's actually it's even better so now i'm going in i'm i could easily spend it's four dollars for a water at that could could the concessions at yankee stadium i was gonna gonna say it's more than that i think in chicago yeah so right so you're going to spend more than five dollars anyway so you know it's perfect so we we get and again the people in the lower sections there's no reason to compensate them at all like why are we compensating you? You bought a more expensive seat. We're giving these people 500 sections tickets. You know what I mean? Maybe this is just a New York thing. Cause I don't know if you saw the Cubs game last night, there was a, a moment in, was it the seventh inning when the Cubs are up 10 2 and it's freezing cold? Like it was a cold game yesterday. And the fans are all chanting when Cody Bellinger's up and they're going, Cody, did you see that? Yeah, he's having a great start. Look, a, I mean, hey, did you wow, see out in Arizona? Like, did you see beautiful. out in Arizona today? The day game, it's 90 degrees out there beautiful weather and the whole arizona is chanting volpe volpe because there's all yankee fans out there i don't know if you saw it, it looked no, incredible no. did there's, he did he hit a home run one, no there was oh, this oh. one picture but the yankees won and by the way one of my headlines welcome to the season aaron judge welcome nice of you to join us an rbi double and a two-run homer so very nice of aaron judge to join the baseball season only a week late but he's here he's arrived um and no, there was a uh, there was a shot, a beautiful picture that Marcus Stroman posted on Twitter, actually, of you see the whole Yankee dugout celebrating and everyone behind them is all Yankee fans in Arizona today, like fired up cool. yeah. um, after the judge home run, I think it was. Or, oh, sorry, after the Verdugo home run in, in, um, in actually. No way he hit a home run. Wow. Who? Wait, oh, Verdugo? Yeah. I th- what are you talking about? Oh, wow. I didn't think, I didn't realize he hit a home run today. Verdugo hit a he hit a two yeah, bomb. I see it. Yeah, I, I thought it. he was just destined to be mediocre forever. Nah, I mean it's weird what's gonna happen when obviously when everyone's back healthy on that team and they have the full <laughs> outfield, we'll see what happens. But yeah, he right. he um he hit a bomb. Um, good so him. good for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any headlines before we get to our uh, to our injuries? No, no, I'm ready to do. Let's let's dive into them. So the first two injuries I want to hit because I never root for injury. You know I'm a good guy, but these just made me feel good. <laughs> I'm just oh, happy about that. these. Uh, Royce Lewis and Josh Jung. I mean, how many people in the fantasy baseball expert like world, people who consider themselves like yourself to be a fantasy baseball expert, savant, were just creaming themselves to these guys before the season? And it seems to be a theme on this episode. Anyway, they, they uh, and now oh, where's your mind at tonight? It's late. Like you yeah. record, you realize it's what time it is in Chicago versus what time it is. Here. Hey, I was ready to go. I mean, you're the, I was waiting for my chocolate slash. chip cookie. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to Uber eats a chocolate chip cookies. I had dinner and I was like, I need dessert. So I Uber eats five chocolate chip cookies. 
but yeah, I I was excited for Royce, but I always knew that this was this was potential. We Josh talked Young about it. These guys, these yeah. guys are injury mm-hmm. prone. Josh Young feels, I mean, and that's you know we talked about this too. Can you call him injury prone for getting hit in the wrist? Maybe, maybe I don't know. But and this is Royce, what we said. Like the, the person that I brought up is Aaron Judge. Like oh, he dove one time and then he ran into a wall and he got hit on the wrist. Yeah, but when these keep injuries keep happening to you, even if they're all fluke weird injuries, at some point you become injury prone. Yeah, but Royce definitely feels different because he's not, his aren't fluke per se. They're muscle, you know, related and and knee related. And those are definitely a little more scary. But Royce Lewis went healthy. We saw it. I mean, two two at-bats. He had a home run and a single in his first two at-bats of the season. That's like, like he is, and I don't say it lightly, he is MVP candidate. Like when he, if he played a fully healthy season. And so, yeah, that's why we were, creaming our pants is because if this dude even puts together a hundred 120 games like this is like Corey Seager from last year like Corey Seager didn't play a full season yet he was still in MVP discussion and you know he still had a phenomenal it was like year, Mike so. Trout every year of his prime where he'd play like 130 games and it's like well his numbers are good enough for him to win that's, MVP anyway that's pretty much what we're looking at here and so yes that's why we were so excited Josh Young I wasn't as excited for Josh Young um I I think he's you know, he's got a lot of power hits in a good lineup, but um, he was still going a little too high for me. But, uh, you know, a lot of other people, yes, you're right, were, we're all over him. Well, good sad. thing you wore. Well, good thing you wore your white pants to this episode. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's sad. It's very sad. Yeah. Uh, any other big injuries you wanted to hit on? Nothing that I noticed since the last time. No. Okay. Um, well, I have some prospect injuries, but we can get to those in the. That will be part of our prospect report. report. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, and we also did have a mailbag question that relates to the prospect report. 